Okay, welcome to a, another episode in the series of Ballot Miller 2022. This is the Tower of Coffee Hour, and I'm Ty Tyree, your host. Today we have a great opportunity to talk some more about the Austin City Council races, and particularly in District 9. And our, our guest today is Greg Smith, and his website is gregfor9.com, uh, which is pretty good. It was interesting when I looked at all the candidates, nine candidates for District 9. Uh, Greg, I've got two friends with on Facebook. We have two common friends. Uh, and one of the candidates, and I won't say who it is, and I have 98 common friends, which, and he's pushing me hard to endorse him. And I said, I'm not endorsing anybody till I've talked to everybody. So let's take a chance and go talk with Greg. And there we go. I am going to have to pull you up, Greg, and get you on camera. And there you are. There you are. Great. Yeah, you're on camera. Thank you. Thank um, you. Thanks for, ha thanks for having me, Ty. Appreciate it. Well, this is, you know, why did I do this? This is crazy. But it, uh, it's been a lot of fun talking to people and just having a conversation and having a, a good time. Uh, letting you speak about who you are and what you want to do for the city of Austin gives my neighbors a chance to make a dis better decision. So here we are. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background. We were talking beforehand and you said something about being a uh, Air Force brat and go from there. I was, you know, I, I, I spent, um, my family got transferred here uh, when we were, when I was seven years old and I'm 57 today. And so, right. <laughs> um, yeah, been, a, been, a, been around a long, long time. Austin has been great to my family and I, and I, we have a lot of history with family members in Austin. Um, I grew up on, um, in the North side of Austin. I went to uh, cook elementary school. I went to a uh, web sixth grade center. I went to Dobie Junior High and Lanier High School. Okay. And, uh, you know, I, I consider myself extremely lucky to have grown up in Austin and uh, be a part of all of the things that have happened in Austin, or not be a part of, but at least see all of the changes that have happened in Austin all of this, all of these times, all this, gosh, 40 plus years now okay. it's been uh it's been a wonderful experience we were we were chatting just before we came on uh, uh on live here or recorded that you know we used to watch those those airplanes land in and, <laughs> in and out of mueller over i-35 and as a kid that was that was something special to be over there and watch some of those those planes land right where you guys live now yeah like there's the uh, intersection that's about a block and a half from our house is where one of the runways goes right through. So yeah, this house would have been very close to being on a runway. So, uh. well, my dad, my dad was uh, actually the uh, the uh, fire chief at Bergstrom Air Force Base. Oh wow! And so yeah, we I, I I often as a kid used to go out there and get on the runway, and it's just you know as a kid it's just real fascinating to yeah. see these planes. Kind of, kind of land. It's been, it's been interesting. It's really interesting. Okay, so did that. Where'd you go to after Lanier? I started out. Well, I was fortunate enough that I got into the golf business in the summer that Austin Country Club moved from Riverside Drive over to its current location. I applied for a job in between my senior year in 1983 to. Uh, to work at the new Austin Country Club, the new location. And uh, I had played golf in high school and uh, I decided to go to Southwest Texas so that when I, I could commute to Southwest Texas on Tuesdays and Thursdays and then work, you know, uh, all the other days at, at Austin Country Club. It, an unbelievable opportunity, of course. And again, you and I talked a little bit about this before we started. An unbelievable opportunity to be around kind of the who's who of Austin. Sure. You know, in the in the in the mid '80s, uh, uh, a lot of 
well-established names that were members at Austin Country Club. I was fortunate enough to be, you know, carrying their golf bag from the bag room <laughs> to the golf cart to go while they went and played golf. And I've, I've really fell in love with the, with, with the golf business. And it led me to a, a career in the golf business that has spanned, you know, Austin Country Club as an assistant golf professional. I, I, when Barton Creek opened, they hired me to, to be a golf professional there. I ended up my career there after 12 years of being, and I ended being the director of golf there. It was owned by a company out of Dallas, eventually owned out of, by a company out of Dallas called Club Corp. Club Corp moved me to a, a club in, in Dallas called Glen Eagles, where I spent, oh gosh, eight or nine years there. And then uh, my last golf job was, is I, I came back and um, helped uh, Spanish Oaks come out of bankruptcy, you know, about a dozen years or so ago. Mm-hmm. At, uh, and I was the general manager at that club. I left the golf business, uh, uh, you know, nine years ago. I'm a commercial insurance broker. My firm is based in Dallas and we have an Austin office as well. Uh, we service Houston, Austin and, and, and Dallas are mostly where our clients reside right now. And so Austin has been, uh, like I said, Austin has been great to my wife and I, uh, uh, we don't have kids. And, uh, you know, a couple of years ago when some, some, some things started happening around Austin, some, what I would classify as mismanagement around Austin, I got interested or reinterested in, Austin politics. I've never grew up wanting to be a politician. I was a politician of sorts, you know, managing these country clubs because you're managing folks that are making $7 an hour and you're mentoring, you know, literally hundreds of people at a time. And over the course of 25 years in that business, thousands, and you're managing expectations of ownership and clientele. And it was an unbelievable education for me in, in all things business. And, um, uh, you know, it was a really, really special time. And, and again, allowed me access to people that I otherwise would have never had access to. And, uh, I, I, like I said, I never really wanted to be a politician, but I, I got so, um, I got so angry at the leadership of Austin that I figured I had this opportunity to try to give something back to a city that has been so good to us. Um, like my, like I said, my wife and I don't have any kids and I'm really, really interested in making sure as Austin progresses through this incredible time in Austin, and it really is an incredible time, but I also want that similar opportunity for the next generation. Mm-hmm. It's really important. It's really important to me, and uh, and so I, I I kicked around the idea of running for city council. Some of my advisors said we talk about this now. Some of my advisors said, you know, I don't know. I don't know if you could win. You know, you can you can try, but I just don't know if you can win. And then uh, you know some issues have popped up here over the last mm-hmm. couple of years that indicate there is a clear path to victory for someone that has some leadership skills and uh, someone that's not the, 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 what I would classify as the system politician. I I think it's set up for someone that's a real moderate thinker um, to, to sit in the district nine seat. Uh, I have a ton of respect for uh, the other candidates in district nine. For a lot of reasons, I think they're smart. I think they're they're well educated. Uh, I think they're passionate. Um, I, I believe they want the best, like I do, for Austin. Uh, my difference between the difference between me and all the other candidates is is I just don't think that they have the leadership skills that are going to be required to make some really, really hard decisions in some of these crisis situations that, that we all believe we're in. And, and we all know what they are. They're, they're, you know, 
their homelessness, there's affordability issues, there's public safety issues, there's transportation issues. These are, these are major decisions that, you know, again, with all due respect, it's not time for amateur hour. We have to have somebody that has access to uh, a variety of experts to bring into the room to get to the right solution. We, we can't make the same bad decisions. I, I said this, and again, I say all of this with, with the utmost respect to my opponents, because I have learned from my opponents. I really have. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but if, if the residents of Mueller think that we are trending in the right direction on some of these major issues, then I suggest that they research the other candidates, pick one out and vote for them. Because I don't believe that. That's not what I see. It's not what I experience as a resident. It's not uh, what I hear with the over 2000 people that I've spoken with that are residents of Austin. Not all 2000 are in District 9. Uh, but that is the, the overwhelming majority of those folks believe that Austin is trending in the wrong direction. Yeah. And if you want the, if you want the same type of leadership, then again, I recommend that you figure out who your best candidate is. That is my opponent. And then, uh, you know, vote for them, support them and vote for them. I want your vote for sure. Don't get yeah. me wrong. I really do. I mean, but but I want to be very transparent because you know some of the things that are on my website are 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 about accountability and are about transparency, uh, uh, and I think that's I think that's vitally important to get through crisis situations. I mean, when we're we have to seriously evaluate all of the things that have been touched. Uh, by this city council over the last three or four years. And we have to, we have to maneuver this ship in a different direction, like quickly. Yeah. We, don't well, have we, a, we don't have, we don't have a lot of time to, to mess around with, yeah. with these, we've, these situations. We've got a number of crisis points. Your, your uh, <laughs> colleagues running for office have talked a lot about affordability, talked a lot about housing, those kind of things, and that we are in a crisis situation. We are in a critical, critical place. Uh, on your website, let me run down it right now. You've got you know, major my, priorities. My website, my website, Ty, is Greg4D9. Okay, for people to look Just at FYI. it, Greg4D9. Yeah, Did I have Greg9. for 9 Yes, sir. You're right, so, Greg4D9. No, 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 Yes, Good. sir. Yeah. I will, sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt you. We'll I mention apologize. that again at the end. Again, no, no you've got worries. homelessness, public safety, social services, transportation, affordability, accountability, and economic opportunity. You see a lot of problems out there. I uh, do. You know, it's not just, it's one thing. And I would argue that they're all intermixed. And one thing that I keep pushing a little bit, I have to because of my age, is a whole discussion of the aging population in Austin. People think of Austin as a young city, but we are one of the fastest growing aging populations in the nation. And we have got to recognize that in a lot of places, homelessness, affordable housing, uh, assisted living, uh, care, all those kind of things. So those are one of the, something I always like to throw into the conversation to talk about. Uh, my, my history in Austin has been in transportation and transportation safety. Uh, I also sort of sat on the Public Safety Commission for six years. So let's, if you don't mind, let's start with your vision on what's wrong with the transportation system and what can we do about it? What will you do about it if you become Mr. Mr. Counselor, District 9? Yeah, it's a good question. It's a hard question. Um, and I, th I think that pro I'm a big Project Connect fan. Okay. I, I, 
I am uh, in favor of Project Connect. I'm in favor of, uh, you know, the transit folks uh, providing the right solutions to give us the best opportunity to succeed. Um, I'll be the first to tell you, I'm not an expert on any of those things that are on my website. I'm not. Uh, I don't think a leader has to be. I think a leader has to recognize who uh, who is best qualified to solve these issues and make sure they're a part of the solution and that they are held accountable for providing those solutions. Um, I, I, I think that density on, and I would agree with what you're saying, a, a lot of these issues are run, yeah. certainly run parallel yeah. for sure. A absolutely. But I, I think that density levels on, on the transit lines are not only a, um, a, a huge opportunity, economic opportunity for Austin, but I also believe that it's a huge opportunity to move a lot of people around Austin in a safe manner. Uh, and that's why I voted for Project Connect. Uh, I am, I, 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 I harbor the same concerns as most residents. Wait a minute, you said it was 7 billion, now it's 9 billion. And you know, at the end of the day, it's gonna be 20. Oh yeah. And it's gonna it take, is, it's, it's gonna take twice as long as we thought it was. Yeah. Twice as long, I, I, there's, I, we know this. We, I, we absolutely know this. But again, it's very critical that we get it right. Mm -hmm. That we have the right people that can provide the answers to to a lot of these questions that uh, you know Austin residents deserve the correct answers to. Um, I, I think that with the type of population, I don't want to overpromise either, Ty. I think that's, uh, I think there's too many politicians that do that right now. You know, I, I, I would rather say that there's always going to be some traffic congestion issues in Austin just because of, of you know, the, popul the popularity of Austin, but that shouldn't prevent us from providing alternatives that are safe and you have the ability to get around Austin mm -hmm. for the 11th largest. I, I, I tell this to my friends that are not project connect folks. They, they, you can hear them. Wait a second. It's going to be $20 billion. It's going to take forever or whatever. And I go, wait a second. This is the 11th largest city in the country. You should mm -hmm. be able to go somewhere or land at the airport and get to a destination on public transit system safely for the 11th largest city in the country. Now, again, I'm 57 years old. I sure hope that I have the ability to, <laughs> to, 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 to make that happen, Ty. Well, uh, I know but, I'm not going to see it, but I'm hoping for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm really hoping that I get, I get the ability to do that, but I, I, I want, I, I want the experts in the room and I want them to know that they're part of the solution. And here's, here's a key component to all this too. I, I, I truly believe that somebody that's a really, really good leader is not a yes person. I think I have the unique ability to, to, to tell people that are in the room that have opposing views. Look, I'm sorry, this time you lost. And it's just a better option for the majority of the people that we go in this direction. And oh, by the way, if that direction starts to trend in a, in a way that we don't think that we are hitting our, our stated goals, we will stop and move towards your direction. I say, I say this to a lot of people. I would seriously contemplate dropping out of the race if one, if somebody can point to me one time in the last, I don't know, three or four years, where a, a current city council person said, gosh, you know what? We just got that wrong. Yeah. We need to go in a different direction. So you, you're you telling me that we're, we're going to spend 
hundreds of millions of dollars, or we Bill, have spent billions of dollars. No, no, I'm talking about homeless. We're going to okay. spend a hundred, okay. hundreds of millions of dollars on the homeless situation. And to date, we've got everything right. You're going to tell me that we're going to spend, I mean, seriously, you're, you're going to tell me that. And, and again, if you take someone that's got a, in my case, no hair, but in, and, and gray beard, you can appreciate that. It, I think that we have the, the unique ability to tell people no this time and, or by the way, look, got it wrong. We're going to have to stop and go in a different direction. Okay. There's nothing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, and well, it's and necessary. Too, I don't believe absolutely, and I and I also believe that you know, uh, I, I truly believe this. I cannot be the expert on everything. Just because I'm running for city council, Ty, does not mean that I have on my website right now all of the right answers. It does it doesn't mean that. My my commitment is is if you vote for me. You're going to be getting my judgment, which is a lot more important than anything that I can put on a on a website. And my judgment means that we're going to listen to all people. I had a meeting this morning with somebody that I cannot tell you who I had the meeting with. And I and I cannot tell you what we were discussing. It was it was just private information. It was educational private information for me. He completely changed my thought on a subject that's going to come up in the next six months with city council. I went in thinking one way. I left and went, holy cow, I was wrong. I was wrong about that thought. I was, I was, and, I, and thank goodness I hadn't said anything about it to anybody because it's a it's not a subject that's that's a major issue right now but when i left i was like he's completely right i'm completely wrong but he's the type of person that i have access to to ensure that we have the right answers and that we don't if we do make a mistake at least it was of the education it, we had it was a the correct commitment, we just didn't quite get it right, and we're going to go in a different direction. Yeah. That's what you get from, from, from me. And I believe that's what Austin needs. Austin needs a moderate thinking candidate. You know, we, we, need, we actually need a moderate thinking candidate that wins. <laughs> sort of like Greg yeah. Smith. Well, I, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's kind of a shameless promotion. Of oh, okay. Look at my back wall back here. It's like Greg Smith, Dina, yeah, blah, blah, blah. But, but ser in all seriousness, just think, I mean, we've had these, the, the same candidates for years and we're in these situations. It would be nice if we had some moderate candidates mixed with these candidates and it would just be nice to know what the results w would have been. I, I got to tell you this story about transportation. I know oh, we're kind of before we get off transportation. Time. You have got to answer <laughs> one question, and that's yes, sir. What is your vision of the I thirty five expansion? Yeah, that's a you know, I I, I think I'm 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 pretty sure I'm for the plan of what Text Dots want, wants to do. Um. I know that's not going to be popular with uh, the Rethink I-35 folks, but here's what I told the Rethink I-35 folks. Adam, I think is his name. Really unbelievable guy, smart yeah. guy. Adam's neat guy. He's one of the first, yeah, he's one of the first folks that I, I met with, and I really like him a lot. In fact, he and I have talked just off record a little bit uh, because he asked me to sign his pledge, and I, I, I didn't. I, I said I, I can't sign this pledge. I'm sorry, and I said, but here's what I will commit. I will commit when I'm sitting in the D9 seat that you will have a seat at the table, and we'll go. Well, what do you think? And you're going to say what you think, and then we're going to have the opposition, and we're going to say what do you think? 
And I was like, is there some type of compromise that we can make here? And if the answer is yes, then let's try to make that compromise and let's go forward so that you get a little bit of what you want and you get a little bit of what you want. And maybe one side gets a little bit more and the other side doesn't get quite as much this time. But this, this, this line of division that it has to be just one or the other. And some of these subjects, it, 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 it's not gonna work. It's just not going to work. And so um, I hate what I-35 represents. Mm -hmm. I really do. Because I shouldn't say that I've experienced that. I, I know that when I was a kid, right or wrong, I was told not to go to on the east side of I-35. And looking back now as a 57 year old adult, that is, mm, it, it really, it, it, it hurts my heart. It hurts my heart what happened there in, in I guess in, 19, is that 1928? 1928. Yeah. yeah, it really hurts my heart to know that that is a part of Austin's history. Um, uh, so again, I, yeah, I, something has to happen with I-35. It's a, it's a, it's just something that has to improve. And I got to tell you this quick transportation okay. story. Okay. Real quick. Ben Barnes, I used to, I, I knew Ben Barnes years ago. You know who Ben Barnes yep. is. Ben, Ben Barnes, uh, I was sitting with him at breakfast one, one day. And I was so young, I didn't know anything. I mean, seriously, I was 23 years old, didn't know anything. And I said, uh, Mr. Barnes, what are you working on at the legislature? And he's like, well, I'm trying to get some peep, some, some support up, people to have a, a, a bullet train between Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, and Houston. And I said, what? He's like, oh yeah, wouldn't it be good if you could get on a bullet train and go up to Dallas for a meeting, then come back. And he was describing all of this. But I think back to that conversation as an example that, you know, just think about if we would have done that, mm -hmm. how, how good we could have built on that transportation in this city. And as, as, as time goes by, if we don't address these, these issues with transportation, you know, somebody 20 years from now is going to sit here and go, God, I remember, uh, uh, I remember Greg it. Smith, Ty, yeah. Ty and Greg Smith, <laughs> you know, talked about, you know, project connect. And, and so again, it's a, it's a vital part of our infrastructure that we've got to address yeah. as leaders in this town for sure. Okay. So that you touched on transportation a little bit when you said we need density around the transport corridors, uh, transportation corridors. Uh, how do we do that with the current land development code? We rewrite it. Okay, we've tried that. Didn't work well. Again. What would you change? Uh, uh, not well, not in the code, but what would you change in the process to make the code rewrite? rewrite work? No, we've got to rewrite it. I'm, I am convinced of that. Right. But we've failed before because part of the population said, we don't want to change what we've got where we live and that kind of thing. That's my view. Uh, how do we change you know the say? system you know now to, to make that work? You know what I say to those folks? I'm sorry, too bad. I, I mean, seriously. If we have a crisis situation <laughs> with affordability and units, then we have to crisis manage, which means we have to change some things that some people are some people are not going to like but that is part of compromise everybody has to be a part of the solution and we can't we i can tell you what we can't do we can't say that we're for affordability and density and every time we turn around vote against affordability and density that's bullshit. that doesn't work and you're a liar if you do that. And you 
uh, if you're involved or touch that, that, that situation and you allow that and you don't speak up, then you don't need to be working on transportation or homelessness. I, I've said this, Ty, about homelessness. I'm not trying to move the subject away That's... From, from density, but I've said this about homeless and homelessness in, in, in multiple candidate forms. Anybody that's touched the homeless situation right now in any part of management needs to be terminated. The results aren't good. The land code isn't good. It needs to be changed. If you're against that, you're going to lose if I'm in office. And that's going to make some people mad. When they hear that, that's going to make some people mad. And we could probably highlight those folks that are going to say that. But at least I'm being honest about it. I also believe that not all density, not all compatibility is created equal. There, there, there needs to be a way for you to say that the bicycle sports shop on South Lamar is a perfect location for the most dense project we could possibly have. It's right on the transit corridor. There's going to be a stop right on the corner. There is no reason that that developer should not, should not only that developer not get charged certain fees, there should be incentives for that person to put product on the ground that's more affordable. It's a simple equation. If you and I are a developer, we got fixed cost, and then we got cost that we can control. If the city reduces the cost that they control, the units are going to be more affordable. Simple math. And, and we have some of the highest development costs in the nation. We might have the highest. Yeah. I, I, I'm just speculating on that. Again, I'm not an expert, uh, but it sure seems like to me, the conversations that I have with folks, I'm not just talking about huge developers. I'm just talking, I'm talking about just normal people. It's like the process to, to the permitting process, the fees that are sometimes associated. And now they're, they're looking at doubling some of these fees. It's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And I will say this again, with all due respect to my, to my counterparts, I, I really believe that there's only two people, there's only two choices in, in District 9. There's me, and then there's everybody else. Because I believe everybody else is a part of the system. They, they tout themselves as, as working on certain campaigns. They, they get endorsements from sitting council members. They have fundraisers with sitting count, current sitting council members. I have this saying, and you, I think you'll appreciate this. When somebody shows you who they are, you should believe them. <laughs> you should pay attention. You should believe them. Yeah. And I, I, again, I, I have a, 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 an extremely high regard for, for my opponents. I know how hard this is. This has been a taxing few weeks for me. Raise money, meet people, have these conversations. This is, you know, trying to educate yourself on things that you, you, you're, you're not educated on. This takes a lot of time and effort. You, you expose yourself to a lot. And so I have a high degree of respect for my opponents, but seriously, there are two choices in District 9. There's me, and then there's one of those other folks. And those are the only two choices that the voters of District 9 have. And I, I, and I would, again, go back to, if, if, you're, if you like the way the land code is, if you, if you like the direction that you think we're, we're going in, a home, in the homeless management situation, if you think we're trending in the right direction, if you think that there's somebody that's a better leader that can put the right people in the butts for 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 uh, uh, addressing the, the the transportation issues, 
you, you should pick that person out on one of those folks and vote for them because I just don't believe that. And I'm not going to be one of, I'm not going to be that prototypical Austin city council candidate. I'm just not going to do it. I don't have to. I, I don't believe it. And I'm damn sure not going to be a liar. There you go. I have been impressed with our neighborhood is how many times your sign shows up in our neighborhood. Because like I said, I knew, knew nothing about Greg Smith when you showed up on the ballot. I said, you know, who is this person? And some of my neighbors either, either know you or have gotten to know you and think you're telling the right story. I, 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 appreciate, I appreciate the folks over there. They've been really willing to help me out a lot, you know, because it's a, uh, it's really, it's really expensive to do this. Yeah. I mean, it's no, this is no, and it takes a lot of people to volunteer mm -hmm. to get the word out. I mean, a lot. And uh, I've got some friends over there that have been just, I mean, every other day they call and say, Hey, we need a few more signs. And when are you getting door knock, you know, material out? Can we canvas the neighborhood when, when your when your information is ready, they've been they've been great. I I, I had I I've just I've been really overwhelmed, frankly, with that neighbor y'all's neighborhood in general. They've been super nice to me, and uh, I, I hope I can develop a a relationship, a bigger even a bigger relationship with yeah. with with you guys. Well, I, you know, I love to tell people that when we get built out, we're going to be a bigger city than Bastrop. Uh, Elgin, uh, Maynard, Fredericksburg, and the big part of that is we're going to have as many jobs as we have residents, and that's that's a very unusual neighborhood because we yeah. have as many jobs as residents, and uh, we vote, Greg. Our our history is that we vote 72, 74 percent of all registered voters go to the polls. So yeah, it's worth worth paying attention to the neighborhood uh, mm -hmm. and seeing what we're going to do uh, so we don't secede from the city of Austin. Uh, can't you see that? I, yeah. I wish, I wish, <laughs> yeah. I was shocked when you, when you and I first spoke and you, you, you told me that, yeah. that the, the number of residents, you know, my, my wife and her, my wife is a residential real estate uh, owner, team owner, and she has, they've sold some, you know, a few houses in there. And, uh, I said, I, I was telling her, her name's Morgan. I was like, Morgan, you know that how big Mueller's is? And she's like, Oh yeah, oh, I know yeah. exactly how big it is. And when you told me that I was like, Whoa, that's impressive. So well, the, the other piece of Mueller is that we have by code, we have 24% affordable housing, both in rental and in ownership. And that's important because that house right across the street just sold for $1.85 million. <laughs> and it's a big wow. house. It's got a lot of square feet. It's got an ADU. It's got lots of things going for it. It sold to a couple from California, of course, uh, yep. and a really nice couple. Uh, but, you know, when you start looking at a neighborhood that you get those kind of <clears throat> those kind of real estate numbers, you've got to do something to make it diverse. And that's one of our criteria is diversity. And that's one of the things that we've lost in Austin is we've lost diversity in Austin because people are moving out. People are leaving the city because they can't afford to live here. And the people we're driving out are the people at the lower end of the income spectrum. And those are the people who cook our meals. Those are the people who service, service us when we go to the club. Those are the people that uh, keep this city running. It's the, you know, it's the public safety. Those are the people, people that are... Those are the people that are building the 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 one point eight million dollar houses. houses. Those Absolutely. are the those, yeah. Those are those are the people that are building the the infrastructure that's downtown, the the high rises that are downtown. Yeah. You know, being in the being in the risk management business, you know, I, I talk to I talk to contractors all the time about affordability and trying to get their your, you know their staff to live as close as possible to to, to Austin because it, it's. It's a huge safety issue. These yes. folks are, are very safe. They're very safe on the job site. You know, 
they, they have they have professionals that help them, you know, with 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 safety with safety on their job site. I said their biggest issue is is they get in their car after an eight or nine day, ten hour day of of, of, of working and they have to travel an hour. I mean, that is a huge safety issue. Huge. And and uh, yeah, there's there's some serious concern there. Uh, it, 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 it does. It hurts. It hurts my heart again to see that what you've just stated is 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 true. And I, I sure hope that we can come up with some solutions to 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 help. Yeah. And it you know, it's we've got to build more. Uh, no question. No question. We have to build more. We have um, to build more and we have to have the ability to build it with, with, with less expensively. And again, that gets back, I wanted to talk a little bit about the aging population. It's the same issue. Uh, I'm on a fixed income. I have been for years. Uh, and I'm, you know, running out of space. Uh, I'm going to have, we're moving in about a year to a smaller space and trying to downsize, reduce our monthly cost and uh, see what we can do. And um, a lot of people in my area, situation have the same thing and if you need assistance for whatever reason you can't take care of yourself anymore you pretty much have to move out of Austin you you just don't have that many choices unless you have a lot of money and, Ty, why uh, is that why is that I'm just uh, curious because, a, because you're, a, I know that you were gonna, I know you were going to ask me a question <laughs> but I'm going to just go ahead and tell you that, that I mean I I don't know what the answer is. I would like to hear what your what the answer is from from you. You think you, how do you think that, that that a city council person like myself can represent you to to assist you with the, the issue you just you just brought up? Well, a lot of it, and part of it is not city level; it's federal and state. But let's talk about city. Um, is making it easy to create space so that friend of mine lived in Wildflower Terrace, which is the plus, uh, the 85 percent affordable plus 55 apartment complex. He had a minor stroke, but he couldn't take care of himself perfectly. You know, we could talk to him clear headed, Everything was fine. He just couldn't get around and take care of himself. He had to move 20 minutes away by car. Well, he's 90, 90 years old. All of his friends, all of the people that he interacted with on a good a lot of them aren't driving. A lot of them have lost their license. Okay, now, so he is now isolated. Even though he's not physically isolated, he's physically isolated. He's out there and he's by himself. He's out there. We need to create space in town where he's, he's close enough that I can walk to see him. I can ride my bike. I can get on transit and go see him so that he doesn't become isolated because isolation is one of the big causes or one of the big factors in dementia and you you get isolated and your brain per capacity goes down your body goes to hell um, he recently passed away uh, he did get to 94 which is doggone good but uh, it was it was really tough on him because he became very isolated from the the people that kept him alive yeah. so it's a it's a story we're going to hear a lot of in Austin because the baby bulge is coming, the baby boom bulge is coming. Uh, and if you look at the charts, you know, it used to be a nice pyramid. People died before they got old. Now it's going to be more like this and actually has a waist in it because the group behind the baby boom is big. And so, you know, who's going to take care of these people? Who's going to be the caregivers? Uh, where are we going to find the caregivers? We're going to run them out of town with the affordability issue. They're not going to be able to afford to work in Austin. So it's all tied in together. And when I start talking aging, it just overflows everything. And so fix the other problems, Greg, and you'll fix the aging problem. <laughs> I'm going to do my best, buddy. I really am. I, I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm doing my best right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to get elected so that, so that, you know, I, I can, I, I can have an answer for you. Uh, when you ask me that question when I'm elected and I can rely on you as a resource, frankly, uh, to say, how, how, you know, how do we, how do we go about, how do we start doing this and, and can you help? And I, I bet that, I bet the answer is yes, you can. Yeah. 
I, I have to be careful when I get into these situations because when I, I moved into Ann Kitchens District uh, some years ago, about 10 years ago, and I said, raised my hand, said, Ann, I've, you know, I've been in this city, I've done a lot for this city, what can I do to give back? And she said, how about a commission? I said, oh, okay, sure, why not, you know? She said, how about public safety? And I said, oh, well, sure, okay, why not? Yeah, yeah six years later, I said, you know, this is, yeah, it's time for me to move on. But uh, yeah, and that's one of the things I like about this city is that we do have something like 50 boards and commissions, which, and some yeah. of them do some really good work. Yeah. And, so uh, who do you appoint? Yeah. You've got appointments to all of those commissions. The question is, who do you appoint to those? Well, I, I, you know, it's pretty. It's a pretty easy answer, frankly. I, I, I reach out to the folks that I have met during this campaign and those that that I've I've I, I, I know over the years, and I say, hey, who's the best fit to represent the majority of the people? That's what I mean by you being a resource. I might not appoint you to one of those positions, but I damn, you know what? I damn sure going to pick up the phone and call you and go, Hey, this is, this is one of the, 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 the opportunities that we have. And I can't get it wrong. Yes. Can you help? Can you help me not get it wrong, please? Because I, I've always said this. I, I mean, a good leader, they, they know what their limitations are. And they know where their weak spots are. And guess what? They hire the best possible people in the weak spots. There you go. And so if I don't know anything about what you've just said, which I readily admit, <laughs> you know, I, what am I going to do? I, I got to have the best possible resource. And that would be you and probably a couple other fo folks. Uh, I, I can certainly give you some names. Yeah, I can give That's, you some names. Sure. That, and, that, and, and, and that's my that's my answer. I mean, I'm sure I could bullshit my way through some other type of answer, like, well, we're going to, you know, we're going to do A, B, and C, but I, I'm just not going to commit to doing that. I, I'm just not going to lie. So. Well, we've been doing this for 47 minutes, and I really appreciate your time. And uh, you you've opened my eyes about a lot of things because I didn't know who you were. And I've seen you online in a couple of forums and that kind of thing, and I was, you know, okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But I've got a lot more respect for where you're coming from, uh, and I really appreciate your uh, stepping up and being open and honest on this. So, thank you. Well, I appreciate Smith. your time. I appreciate your time, and I will also say this: I, I, I'm going to I'm going to thank you for from me and for the rest of the candidates for doing this for your folks in 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 your neighborhood. I think it's extremely important that we get this we get this right this this go around. And so I will also say that any, if anybody has any questions for me that's in, that are, that's in your neighborhood, you, you can call, write, text. I, I, I'm happy to answer any, any questions. And, uh, and he does. He, was, he answered when I sent and said, hey, I'd like to talk to you. He was back within about 20 minutes saying, okay, when can we set this up? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I just appreciate the opportunity. This is really important. I mean, y'all, your y'all's neighborhood is going to really determine the outcome of District Nine. It could. I, I'm really it convinced could. of it. Yeah. Uh, I very, it most certainly, I think it most certainly will. I mean, there are indications and in polling statistics that say that this is vitally important. And so, hopefully, I, I've made enough of an impression to some folks that we can we can get a few votes and I can secure the the. The, the win and represent you guys. There we go. And it's Greg for D9.com. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. You I'm can gonna, find me out there. I'm going to switch off and close down and then I'll come back. So don't go away. I, okay. Uh, all right. All right. Um, okay. Going over here. I think. Are we going over here? We're going over here. There we go. <laughs> So we've been talking with Greg Smith, and it says Greg for nine dot com right there. Forget that; it's Greg for D nine, as in District Nine dot com. So, uh, wow, glad we had this talk because I didn't know anything about him, and um, if nothing else, Greg Smith is honest, and he was willing to speak up and do it for all of us. So I'm going to finish it up now for the Tower Coffee Hour. 
and look forward to seeing you. I've got a couple more candidates for this district, and we'll see if we can get them to talk. Thanks, and take care.